This is problem 7.33, so we're still talking about amplifiers using MOSFETs. And for this particular problem, we have this circuit here. Okay, so in this circuit, we I'm just I'll start discussing about this circuit itself. So one thing is that we have this load here connected at the output, so the voltage across this load is our output voltage and the DC bias circuit that you have to bias the MOSFET is this circuit here okay is this circuit here so and we ignore this part here in this part outside here for the bias analysis because this capacitors with an infinite capacitance it basically indicates that if we have a DC value they work as an open circuit so they basically decouple uh, the output and the input signal right and once we have uh, the small signal analysis or the small signal circuit they they behave like a short circuit and we'll see that for instance in this case here this node will be grounded once we analyze the short the, the small signal circuit and this one here is also shorted because all the DC voltages are shorted and this one is this one here is shorted because we have this capacitor connected directly to the ground so if this one here for the small signal analysis it becomes a short circuit this capacitor it connects the source of the NMOS here directly to the ground okay so that's basically the circuit that we have it might be ugly and scary but it's not that hard I mean it's once we we, we dissect this circuit you see that it's not that hard uh, so the first part is that given VT so the threshold voltage and the device transconductance we need to verify in that circuit that VGS is actually 1.5 volts ID 0 0.5 milliamperes and VD is equal equals to 0 7 sorry 7 volts so I have on this pictures here on the left just the bias biasing circuit okay now for VGS, we can first uh, obtain the value of VG, okay? And if we look at the circuit and remember the, the proper working of uh, MOSFET, we know that this current here is actually zero amperes, right? There is no current flowing through the gate. So we can apply a voltage divider here to calculate VGS which is the voltage across this 5 mega ohm resistor right is this potential here so this is VG and uh, so in this case VG is equals to that 15 volts that we have here times 5 mega ohm divided by 5 plus 10 mega ohm and this gives us 5 volts so this is VG okay now for VGS to verify VGS So we verify VGS equals to VG equals to 5 volts. Now we just need to verify that VGS is, is actually 1.5 volts. And for that we can use the equation that VG is equals to VGS plus Vs and Vg in this case is equal so Vgs is 1.5 so 
So let's see if this value of VGS and ID gives us the same value of the gauge that we have here, right? Because VG is equals to VGS is equals to VG minus VS, so we can isolate VG in the equation for VGS. And this is 1.5 plus now what's VS? So VS is this terminal here which is equals to ID times the 7k ohm. So it's ID times that 7k ohm. Or if you don't want to use 1.5, we can just isolate VGS. So VGS is equals to VG minus VS. And then VGS is equals to 5 minus ID, which in our case we are assuming that it's 0 0.5, verifying that 0 0.5 times 7k ohms, and that indeed gives us 5 minus 3.5, that's 1.5 volts. Okay, so indeed uh, VGS for this value of ID and VG it's 1.5. Now we need to verify VD equals to 7. So if we look here, this is VD, this is ID, and we can again apply Ohm's law, right? So 15 minus VD is equals to ID times those 16k ohms. So VD is equals to 15 minus ID times those 16k ohms. This gives us a VD that's equals to 15 minus 8 volts and that's indeed 7 volts. So we verify VD, VGS. Uh, and finally we can verify the value of ID so we know that ID is equals to one half the device transconductance times V overdrive squared so ID is equals to 1.5 times KN which in our case is 4 milliamps per squared volt. And V overdrive is VGS minus VT. So it's 1.5 minus VT, which is 1 volt squared. And this gives us an idea of 0 0.5 milliamps, which agrees with the assumption, right? So we verify that all those values, VGS, ID, and VD, they are actually 1.5 volts, 0 0.5 milliamps, and 7 volts. Okay. Now for part B is find GM and the output resistance if the early voltage is 100 volts. So for this one here, let me go down. So we have an equation for the transconductance, GM that's equals to 2 times ID divided by the overdrive voltage. So this is same as 2 times 0 0.5 milliamps divided by the overdrive voltage, which again is 1.5 VGS minus VT, 1 volt. And this gives us 2 milliamperes per volt. That's GM. And the output resistance, R0, is equals to the magnitude of the early voltage divided by ID, which is 100 volts divided by 0 0.5 milliamps, and that's 200 K ohms. Okay. Now, in part C, it says draw the small signal circuit. So the small signal circuit, remember that we need to replace the diode okay, by its small signal circuit. 
and one way to represent this thing is so now the capacitors in the in the in the starting circuit they become a short circuit right so we now couple the input signal we also couple the load here so we couple the input signal here and we also couple the output here connected directly to the drain now if you look at this circuit so this one here is vg1 use it to bias this one here is vg2 use it it, it was also used to bias the circuit this 200k here is the source resistance this 200k here is the output small uh, output small signal resistance are not that we just calculated in part b and this one here is our rd okay and the current that's flowing here at the drain so this is the drain here is the source it's grounded and here is the so here is the gate right so we have a current flow in the drain that is gm times vgs and vgs is this potential here at this terminal so all the resistors here and sources they are grounded and that's the circuit that's the small signal circuit that we have okay now in part d it says find the input resistance so for this one here i just have copy and paste this part of the circuit okay because that's the part that we use to analyze the input resistance so the input resistance is the resistance seen uh, from these terminals here right so if you look at the circuit you see that the input resistance is actually just those 10 mega ohm in parallel with that 5 mega ohm right it's just like the parallel of those two here and this gives us an input resistance of a hundred so 10 times 5 mega ohm divided by 10 plus 5 this gives us an input resistance that is 3.333 mega ohm Okay, it's just this resistance seen from this terminal from this point here in the circuit so we just ignore the 200k because it's the resistance seen from this node here uh, to the right now the second uh, the second value that we need to define here is VGS over V signal okay now if we look at this 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 first part here right we have V signal here and VGS here and we can apply a, a voltage divider right now remember that this parallel here is our input resistance right so we are VGS is actually the voltage in this case across the, that input resistance so if we apply a voltage divider here we get that VGS is equals to V signal times the input resistance which is this equivalent resistance here divided by the input resistance plus the voltage resistance right so plus those 200 K if we put isolate V signal on the left hand side too so we get VGS over this signal that's actually the input resistance divided by the input resistance plus those 200 K and because we know the value of the input resistance we can actually obtain the value of VGS divided by this signal that's just 3.33 mega ohm divided by 3.33 mega ohm plus 200k and that's actually 0 0.94 volt per volt so that's v VGS over V signal now third part here find V naught over VGS and now I have the 
output part of the small signal circuit so this one here okay so how do we define V0 in terms of VGS well we know that the voltage V0 is the voltage across this parallel of resistors right because they are all in parallel so the voltage across this 16k should be equals to this the voltage across this 16k here and this 200k there so in this case V out is equals to and the current that's flowing through this equivalent resistance here in green is actually GM VGS right that's forced by this current source and because the current here is flowing counterclockwise and we are measuring V0 as if the current was flowing clockwise we have to take into account the minus GM VGS which is which is a small ID let me write it correct so small ID times the equivalent resistance which is those 200k in parallel with 16k in parallel with 16k so V0 is actually equals to and divided by VGS right we can isolate VGS here so we can divide here by VGS So V0 over VGS is equals to minus GM times the parallel of 200K with 16K with 16K. Now this parallel here is 8K. So we just need to calculate minus GM times the parallel of 200k in parallel with 8k and if we substitute the value of GM that we calculated before that's 2 milliamperes per volt we get that V0 over VGS is equals to minus 15.5 38 volt per volt and the last part is V0 over V signal so if we if we go back here we know the value of VGS over V signal right we know this one here so we know VGS over V signal and we also know up here V0 over VGS if we multiply both basically VGS here cancels with VGS there and this becomes V0 over V signal which is the multiplication of those two values so it's 0 0.94 times minus 15.38 which gives us V out over V signal equals to minus 14.5 volt per volt okay that's all for this problem